Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over three worked examples to show you how to do problems involving potential dividers, otherwise known as potential divider circuits. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, as that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says to calculate the potential difference across the 40 ohm resistor. So in this picture here you can see we've got a 20 ohm resistor in series with a 40 ohm resistor and we've not got a supply voltage. So the supply voltage or battery is actually being cut off from the picture. But we do know the voltage across this first resistor which is 6 volts and we're asked to calculate the voltage or potential difference across the 40 ohm resistor. So a good idea here is to start by labelling the resistors. Let's call the lower resistor number 1 and let's call the upper resistor number 2. That means I'm trying to find the voltage V2 across resistor R2. So V2 is what I'm trying to find here. We can say that R2 is 40 ohms, V1 is 6 volts, and R1 is 20 ohms. So writing down our equation for potential divider circuits when the supply voltage is not known, we have V1 over V2 equals R1 over R2. Substituting in the numbers gives 6 over V2 equals 20 over 40. And what you can then do is one of two things. You can either just simplify this right hand side to get 0 0.5 because 20 over 40 is a half. And then you can manipulate this to get V2 or you can just cross multiply. So I'm going to cross multiply. So we do the thing in the top right times the thing in the bottom left times the thing in the top left times the thing in the bottom right. So I get 20 V2 equals 6 times 40, which means if you do 6 times 40, you get 240. Divide that by 20 in your calculator and you get V2 is equal to 12 volts. And a quick check here is that because the resistance value here is twice as big as the first resistance value of 20 ohms and this was 6 volts, then we should expect the voltage value across this resistor to be twice as big as well. So that means that this should be 12 volts. And you see we've just shown that because we've got 12 volts here. Question 2 says that a potential divider circuit is shown below. We've got an 8 volt battery and then a 3 kilo ohm resistor in series with a 1 kilo ohm resistor. And part A says to calculate the potential difference across the 1 kilo ohm resistor. So a good thing to do here is to start by labelling the resistors, just like in question 1. So let's call this one number 1, and let's call this one number 2. That means I'm trying to find V2, the potential difference across this second resistor. I know that R1 is 3 kilo ohms, which we can write as 3000 ohms. And we know that R2 is 1 kilo ohm, which we can write as 1000 ohms. And then we know that Vs, the supply voltage this time, is 8 volts. So what I can do now is write down my equation for potential dividers when we know what the supply voltage is. So that is V2 equals R2 over R1 plus R2 times Vs, because V2 is what I'm trying to find here. So substituting in the numbers, I get 1000 divided by 3000 plus 1000 times 8.0, and putting that into your calculator should give you a final answer of 2 volts. Another slightly longer way to do this question without using the potential divider formula would be to firstly find the total resistance in the circuit, which would be 4000 ohms, adding these two series resistors, and then you could find the current by doing I equals V over R, which would be the 8 volts divided by the 4000 ohms, and then you could find V2, the voltage across this resistor, by doing V equals IR once you know what the current is, and using that resistance of 1000 ohms. But that would be a lot longer than just using this one equation. Part B then says another 1 kilo ohm resistor is connected in parallel with the first as shown below. So we have our 8 volt battery again, our 3000 and our 1000 ohm resistors, and then we've added another 1 kilo ohm or 1000 ohm resistor in parallel with that 1000 ohm resistor there. It then says to explain what happens to the total current in the circuit, you must justify your answer by calculation. Well, what we need to do here is first find the total combined resistance, i.e. the parallel combination and then the series combination and then compare this value to the initial total resistance. So doing that, finding the parallel combination first of the two 1000 ohm resistors, we're trying to find RT. We know that R1 is 1000 ohms and R2 is 1000 ohms. So we get 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Substituting in the numbers gives us 1 over 1000 plus 1 over 1000, which is 2 over 1000. And flipping both sides, we get RT equals 1000 over 2, which is 500 ohms. Then we can do the series combination of the 3 kilo ohm resistor with the 500 ohms. So we get RT is what we're trying to find, R1 equals 3000 ohms, and R2 equals 500 ohms now, which we just worked out. And writing down our equation, we have RT equals R1 plus R2. Substituting in the numbers gives 3000 plus 500, and that's going to simplify to 3500 ohms. So we've found that our total resistance has gone from 4000 ohms initially down to 3500 ohms. So if our total resistance has decreased, then our current in the circuit must have increased. And we've shown that here by calculation. 
So we can say therefore the total current increases since the total resistance decreases from 4000 to 3500 ohms. Lastly, question 3 says to calculate the reading on the voltmeter. So here we have a potential divider circuit set up as a wheatstone bridge circuit. So we have our two resistors in series here, which is in parallel with another two resistors in series here. And we're asked to calculate the reading on this voltmeter at the midpoint. So just like the other potential divider questions we've done, we're going to start by labelling the resistors. So let's call this bottom one number 1, this one number 2, and then over this side, this one number 3, and this one number 4. So we're working from the bottom up. And then we want to find the voltage across each of the resistors at the bottom and then take the difference. So we're going to find the voltage V1 across this resistor and then the voltage V3 across this resistor and then we're going to take the smaller one away from the bigger one to find the voltage on this voltmeter. So to find V1 first of all we know that R1 is 6 ohms and R2 is 6 ohms and Vs is 12 volts. And that's from the picture here so we've got 6 ohms, 6 ohms and 12 volts. So writing down our equation for potential divider circuits when the supply voltage is known, we have V1 equals R1 over R1 plus R2 times Vs, substituting in the numbers, gives us 6 over 6 plus 6 times 12, and if you put that into your calculator you get an answer of 6 volts. Then for the second set of resistors, we're trying to find V3, we know that R3 is 4 ohms, R4 is 2 ohms, and the supply voltage again is 12 volts. And you can see that here, so we have R3 is 4 ohms, R4 is 2 ohms, and we know that the supply voltage is 12 volts. So writing down a similar equation to what we said before, but this time using 3s and 4s, we have V3 equals R3 over R3 plus R4 times Vs, substituting in the numbers, gives 4 over 4 plus 2 times 12, Putting that into your calculator gives a final answer of 8 volts. So what we need to do now is take the smaller one away from the bigger one to get the voltmeter reading. So we can say the reading on the voltmeter is equal to V3 minus V1, which equals 8 minus 6, which equals 2 volts. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.